Today, we'll be reviewing the true story behind the Blair Witch, and by the end of this video, you will know all about the facts behind the lore of one of the most iconic horror films of all time. First things first, the story about the students going missing in the woods of Maryland is fake and completely made up by the filmmakers. But certain parts of the background of this story are actually grounded in folklore. The following are a list of events that contributed to the overall concept of the story behind the Blair Witch. In the winter of 1785, Ellie Kedward was kicked out of the town of Blair after local children said she was doing witchcraft. People thought she died from being out in the cold, but the next year, all of the kids who accused her disappeared. The people of Blair believed that she had cursed the place and left the town, promising never to speak her name again. In 1825, a year after the town was rediscovered and renamed Burkittsville, the villagers held their first wheat harvest picnic. During the picnic, 10-year-old Eileen Trackle wandered off to Tappy East Creek and drowned. 11 people claimed to see a ghostly white hand pull her into the shallow water. Her body was never found, and for days after, the creek became polluted with strange, oily sticks, making the water completely unusable. The townspeople noticed the strange, possibly supernatural things about her disappearance and blamed it on the Blair Witch. In 1886, 8-year-old Robin Weaver supposedly followed a woman whose feet didn't touch the ground into a house in the woods. The woman took Robin inside, locked her in a basement, and said she'd come back later. Scared, Robin escaped through a small window. A search party was sent to find her, but while Robin came back, the search party didn't. Another group went looking for them and found the search party disemboweled at Coffin Rock. But when they came back with help, the bodies had disappeared without a trace. In late 1940, a hermit named Rustin Parr started kidnapping children from Burkittsville. He took eight kids in total, brutally murdering seven of them and letting one boy, Kyle Brody, go. Parr confessed to the crimes in May of 1941, saying he did what the ghost of the old lady told him to do. He was convicted and hanged that same year. But the story isn't just about Rustin Parr, it's about Kyle Brody, the boy who survived. According to certain versions of the story, Kyle's role in the murders of the other children might be bigger than people realize. Rustin Parr had lived on a mountain near Burkittsville as a hermit, and he was well liked by the townspeople. He had a tough childhood. His parents died when he was nine, and he was abused by his uncle. To escape, he built a house in the woods of the Black Hills. In the late 1930s, Parr started hearing strange noises at night and saw a woman in a black dress in the woods who would vanish whenever he would try to follow her. He started hearing this woman in his head, first at night and then even when he was awake. She told Parr to do strange things, like sleep in the basement for a week. Eventually, she began telling him to kidnap and kill children. According to the story, one day, he walked into some kind of store or bar and told people that he was done. When they went to his house, they found the bodies of seven children and Kyle Brody alive and sitting on the front porch. In the courtroom, Kyle Brody is questioned about his time in Rustin Parr's house. He explained that he was standing by the front door, just inside the room, when Rustin told him to stand in the corner and face the wall. From there, Kyle could hear Emily screaming as Rustin began cutting her. Kyle reveals that when he looked back, he saw Rustin carving a symbol on Emily's face. The lawyers at this point reassure Kyle, telling him that he's doing well, and ask him to point out the man who hurt Emily. Hesitant, Kyle pauses, but the lawyer encourages him, reminding him that his parents are present. Eventually, Kyle confirms that the man responsible is Rustin Parr. The questioning continues and Kyle describes how Rustin tied Emily up in the corner while Kyle was forced to face the wall. Rustin hurt her, and sometimes, he would come up to Kyle and ask if he could hear the woman's voice. Kyle, in distress, would cry and beg him to sob, but Rustin never listened. 
The lawyer at this point asks if Kyle knew who Rustin was referring to, or if he had ever seen a woman in the woods, but Kyle answers no to both questions. Kyle then goes on to describe what happened next. After a few days, Rustin killed Emily. He cut her open and took everything out of her body, then left with her remains. Kyle never saw her again. When Rustin came back, he told Kyle not to be sad and promised he would bring another victim soon. A pretty suspicious thing about this case is that none of the seven children except Kyle knew each other, but Kyle knew all of them. He also had a troubled history with some of the victims. Kyle gave the police very detailed information about the abduction of Emily Holland, even though she was taken two weeks before Kyle disappeared. He also knew the exact location of her abduction. Kyle had a difficult past. He had an abusive father, was known to get into fights and like hurting animals, often a sign of bigger issues. In his later life, Kyle spent much of his time in jail or in mental institutions. Then, a rare film called White Animal, a documentary about the conditions in mental hospitals was found. The footage provided key evidence linking Kyle to the murders. In one clip, Kyle is shown riding on a large pad, and as the camera zooms in, it reveals he is writing in a language associated with witchcraft. He wrote from right to left, the same way strange symbols were found on the walls of Rustin Parr's house. This suggests that Kyle was the one who wrote the symbols, not Rustin. Since Rustin couldn't read or write English, Kyle, on the other hand, was extremely smart. In another clip, Kyle is seen in a cell, screaming the phrase, never given. It was documented that the guards who watched over Rustin Parr heard him scream that exact phrase the night before he was executed, though no one knew what it meant. This suggested a deeper connection between Kyle and Rustin, hinting that Kyle may have been more involved in the murders than anyone thought. So what do we make of all this? Is this just another made-up story, or does it hold some truth? Was this background completely fake? Or did Kyle Brody have something to do with the murders? Did he guide Rustin Parr's hand as he killed the seven victims? Did Kyle manipulate Parr's fragile mind to make him plead guilty? Could Kyle have been the true mastermind while appearing to just be an innocent child? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tale. If you had fun or learned anything, be sure to drop a like and comment below. Also, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel or share this video with someone else. It's a very small button for you and a gigantic leap for my channel. Until the next tale, farewell and may the gods smile upon you.